Hello and welcome to the presentation on unit number one of dynamics of machinery that is single degree of freedom systems free vibrations. So these are the contents that we have seen up till now and in the last presentation we talk about this how we can make the formulation of differential equation of motion using these methods and now we will see the undamped free vibrations in case of longitudinal transverse and vibrational vibrating systems. So let us consider here initially the longitudinal vibration system. In this case you can see that there is one spring here and this particular mass and uh, if I give the displacement in this particular spring or uh, this particular mass towards the right so definitely this particular spring will get stretched or it will be having sudden tension inside this. It means actually initially the free length of this particular spring will be this much and when I provide a displacement x to this it will get stretched. So definitely there is certain potential energy that will be stored into this particular spring and because of which again it will try to regain its original position and this mass will be pulled back and this way the vibrations of this particular longitudinal vibrations will take place. Now this uh, same system can be in a vertical way also as it is in horizontal way in this case it is in vertical position. So like it is a spring attached here to the top and there is a mass over here and if I give this question to this particular mass it will start vibrating this up and down motion. So in this case also I can see here that initially there is a this is much as the length of this particular spring and when I give the extension of this there is a stretch the length of this particular spring will be there. And uh, if I have to make the uh, difference between these two things over here so you will find out here that there is no uh, weight of the mass is being considered but in this case there is a weight of the mass is considered because uh, when the this particular mass is uh, acting vertically downward here like this so because of the gravity this weight will be acting downward and because of this it will have some initial displacement okay and when I provide additional deflection to this then the force will be this W plus K into X because the stiffness and the displacement that gives me one force which is an external force uh, acting over this particular mass and the initial mass that is its weight so total force acting in the vertical system will be W plus Kx well in this system only there is a Kx so here you can see the figure diagram of this so this is nothing but the Kx force acting over this particular mass okay and uh, inertia force will be there which is mass into acceleration and the inertia force and this particular Kx will be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction okay so if I put it like this that inertia force m into x double dot is equal to k into x so finally I will get this equation as m into x double dot plus kx is equal to 0 for this particular system similarly in this case uh, the weight is uh, there that is equal to mg okay and that is given by k into delta st so in this case now if I write this total inertia force that is equal to k into in bracket x plus delta st plus w so it is k into x plus k into delta st so we know that the k into delta st is nothing but equal to mg so this will be negative sign of k into delta st and this is positive w so definitely this delta k into delta st and this w will get cancelled out and remaining is m into x double dot plus k is equal to 0 that means final equation will remain same as you are getting in the horizontal case the same will be in the vertical case because of this uh, this delta st and k that particular parameter this w will get cancelled out from here so you can see here the figure diagram which is drawn for this system that is k into in bracket delta st plus x up in upward direction and this is w in downward direction so this k into delta st and this w that is getting cancelled out so only force remains in the upward direction that is k into x and the inertia force m into x double dot so this is what is the comparison between horizontal and vertical system in case of longitudinal vibratory system and then uh, if I just divide this equation by m so I will get this x double dot plus k by m into x is equal to 0 and then if I compare with this uh, simple harmonic motion of equation so I will get the omega n square is equal to k by m and therefore omega n is equal to under root of k by m or k by m back at s to power 1 by 2. Similarly uh, in case of a transverse and uh, then we will see the torsion vibration system also so first we will see the transverse vibration here in this case so in case of transverse vibration you can see the simple example of a beam so this is a cantilever beam and this particular mass is at this end so in this case if I have to represent the figure diagram of this so I will find here that there is a mass that is represented here m so in the upward direction there is k into x and that is nothing but the steepness of this particular beam 
so this is very much being considered as a spring because it is like a leaf spring so leaf spring having this stiffness k and displacement of this whatever is there that is k into x that is upward force and uh, as we are going to move this in the downward direction so opposite direction will be the inertia force that is m into x double dot so if I write the equation for this again so m into x double dot plus k x equal to 0 the same equation I am getting here and therefore omega n is equal to k omega n square will be equal to k by m and therefore omega n is equal to under root of k by m and if I have to write the frequency as a frequency so it will be 1 upon 2 pi in under root of k by m that is nothing but equal to g by delta and if I simplify by putting this value of g as 9.81 and uh, this 2 pi so I will get this frequency is equal to 0 0.4985 divided by delta it means if I simply put the value of deflection delta in this equation so I will get the natural frequency of it so for that uh, there are different types of beam conditions which are represented here so and their deflections equations are specified there so when there is a uh, cantilever beam with a point load at the end with a length L so deflection will be equal to W into L cube upon 3 into EI so I is missing here so 3 W L cube upon 3 into EI similarly if it is UDL in that case deflection is equal to W into L raised to 4 upon ATI and if it is a point load at any other end in on a simply shorted beam so deflection is given by W into A square into B square upon 3 E I L similarly if there is a simply shorted beam and the point load is at the center then it is W L Q upon 48 E I is the equation for deflection and if it is a UDL for a simply shorted beam then deflection is equal to 5 W L Q upon 384 E I ok so if you know the deflection equations simply you have to use these deflection equations to get the natural frequency of this transverse vibration similarly there are uh, other beams and uh, that equations are presented over here try to solve one simple numerical here like uh, there is length of the beam is given as 300 mm this uh, dimension or diameter suppose it is a cylindrical rod so it's a 50 mm and the mass is 100 kg here so deflection initially you have to calculate for this how much will be the deflection so I am using the condition of uh, cantilever beam with a point load at the end so W L cube upon 3 is the deflection equation for this so W is 100 kg so 100 multiplied by 9.81 L cube so L is 300 mm so I will write 0.3 in terms of meter cube upon 3 into E modulus of elasticity value 200 into 10 raised to 9 into 5 by 64 d raised to 4 that is I moment of inertia of this particular rod so I will get this deflection as 0 0.14 into 10 to minus 3 meter and if I have to get the natural frequency of it, I am using the equation 0 0.4985 divided by under root of delta. So this is equal to 41 hertz. Similarly, now for the torsional vibrating system, so you can see there is one shaft and a disc at its end, and uh, if it is vibrating along the axis of this, like this, rotational moment is there. So if I consider it is deflecting in any one direction suppose if I consider that it is rotating in this direction like this so opposite of that will be the moment stored into this so that is nothing but equal to kt into theta so if the, I am going to displace it by amount theta here so kt into theta will be the opposite moment that will act over this particular shaft if this particular system is having the mass moment of inertia as j okay so it will have some inertia torque also so we have to find out initially suppose the stiffness of this particular shaft okay so i will be using the torque equation that is t by j into g theta by uh, equal to g theta by l is equal to tau by r and uh, where this j is nothing but equal to 32 d raised to 4 so this is nothing but the j for this particular shaft and if I have to find out the kt that is stiffness for this particular shaft so it will be t by theta that is nothing but equal to g into j by l so this way you can find out the stiffness of this particular shaft and now the inertia now if I have to write the equation of motion for this particular system because as I am giving that uh, angular displacement theta to this particular disc in the uh, clockwise direction like I can say here so because of the inertia it will try to move in the opposite direction also and then it will start oscillating about this so this direction of this inertia torque and the 
stiffness uh, due to the stiffness whatever the moment is there that will be a same direction so i can add this so j into theta double dot that is nothing but equal to mass into acceleration so mass moment of inertia okay and angular acceleration theta double dot plus kt into theta that is torsional stiffness multiplied by theta so this i am getting this theoretical equation that is equal to zero and from here i can get the natural frequency that is equal to under root of kt by j zero okay and this is actually circular frequency and the natural frequency is given by 1 upon 2 pi in under root of kt by j0 or you can say kt by j0 raised to power 1 by 2. So uh, if I uh, compare the linear and the torsional system, so I will find out here that in the case of linear system I am writing x as displacement, so in case of torsional it is a theta as angular displacement. Similarly x dot is the velocity in linear and theta dot is the velocity in case of torsional. This is acceleration in case of linear and this is acceleration in case of torsional m into x double dot is the inertia force and i into theta double dot or j into theta double dot is the notation that you are using for the mass moment of inertia that is nothing but the torsional moment k is the stiffness for the linear system so kt is the stiffness for the torsional system similarly kinetic energy if i have to write for the linear system it will be equal to 1 by 2 m into x dot square and kinetic energy for the torsional system will be equal to 1 by 2 i into theta dot square similarly potential energy will be for linear system 1 by 2 k into x square and for, for a potential energy for a personal system it will be 1 by 2 kt into theta square while the natural frequency in this case we have obtained previously is uh, given as 1 upon 2 pi under k by m and here it is equal to 1 upon 2 pi under of kt by i or kt by j whatever is the equation you are using for the mass moment of inertia so similarly uh, here the mass moment of inertia about the center of gravity of a body for a solid circular disk is given as m into r square by 2 while for the circular ring it is given as m r square and for a rod or the for the beam it is given as m l square by 12 so these equations are required to be used in solving the numericals related to this so let us see uh, one simplest numerical here on how we can determine the equivalent stiffness mega newton per meter of this particular given system now you can see here there is one rod here okay like a cantilever beam and at the end of the cantilever beam there is one spring attached having stiffness 2 into 10 to 6 newton per meter and there is another mass attached to the end of this particular spring that is 100 kg and again one more spring is there at the bottom of this mass of 3 into 10 to 5 newton per meter and the uh, modulus of elasticity for this particular beam is specified as 210 into 10 to 9 newton per meter square and i moment of inertia for this is 3.8 into 10 to minus 5 meter raised to 4 so this system we can replace into a simpler system because now definitely this nothing this beam is nothing but a spring so i am going to represent this stiffness as a k1 so i am going to represent this particular system into a system like this with a stiffness k1 here this is i am going to mark this thing as a stiffness k2 and this spring i am going to mark it as a stiffness k3 now definitely I will find out here that these two springs are in series. So I have to combine these springs K1 and K2. Okay, so that it becomes a K12 spring here and here it is as it is K3 spring. And then I will again find out that this K12 and this K3 they are these two are in parallel and then I have to combine this thickness further. So let us first of all try to find out what is the value of this K1. So K1 is nothing but equal to W by delta. So in case of cantilever beam, uh, your deflection is W L cube upon 3 EI. So using that, uh, W by delta is equal to 3 EI upon L cube. So if I put the value of E as 2 into 10 to, uh, 210 into 10 to 9 multiplied by 3.8 into 10 to minus 5, which is the value of I and L cube. So it is length is 2 meters, so 2 raised to power 3. So I will get this value of K1, which is equal to 30 multiplied by 10 to 5 Newton per meter and then I am going to combine this k1 and k2 so I am using this equation 1 upon k12 is equal to 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2 so I am putting the value of k1 as 30 into 10 to 5 and k2 is 2 into 10 to 6 so I am combining these two finally I will be getting this value as 12 into 10 to 5 newton per meter so in the next slide now I will combine the uh, stiffness of this uh, we just stop here and we'll see the remaining part of this numerical in the next presentation